There is a quote emblazoned upon some DVD and Blu-ray covers of Robin Hardy's The Wicker Man that describes it as Britain's best horror film. While it's hard to argue with the sentiment, the notion of The Wicker Man as a horror film is in many respects an unusual one. The tale of devoutly religious police officer Sergeant Howie, played by Edward Woodward, heading to a mysterious Scottish island to investigate the apparent disappearance of a young girl, serves to be more of a mystery. There are no jump scares and nothing supernatural, just the very real notion of belief and faith. And there are no deaths either, but we'll come back to that. The Wicker Man is a hard film to watch these days without knowing what happens at the film's iconic climax. It's a bit like viewing Psycho without knowing Marion Crane's fate in the shower, or watching Planet of the Apes without pre-existing knowledge of what planet they're on. It's that final scene that we're going to analyse, commencing shortly after Howie has realised that Rowan, the young girl he was told was missing, was little more than bait. The scene commences with Howie and Rowan escaping from a cave, a moment that symbolises rebirth, before an initially confused Howie is stunned to discover that Lord Summerard, played by Christopher Lee, and the villagers have lured him to an island to be a sacrifice, as he fits the four criteria they need to appease the pagan god of sun and the goddess of the orchard and make their harvest bear fruit. This is often cited as a twist, but is better described as a reveal of what has been happening all along, similar to the aforementioned Planet of the Apes. How he is a fool, he has the power of a king for representing the law, he arrived of his own free will, and is a virgin. Sexuality and reproduction are central to the ideas of the beliefs on Summer Isle, and it is often this that Howie revolts against. His prudish attitude seems to stem from his puritanical religion, but may well come from his own repression, and the island brings this out. Whilst the women on Summer Isle are testing him to see if he is a virgin, they are also potentially exposing his own sexuality. Upon learning that he is to be a sacrifice, Howie is also told that subsequently he is to be revered and anointed as a king and take on a Christ-like role for the villagers, killed for the good of the people, undergoing death and rebirth, resurrection if you like. Howie argues against this with his Christian beliefs, but fails to see the connection between the two, or note that many Christian practices are built on paganism. Dressed in Christ-like robes, he berates the villagers with his belief in the life eternal, as promised by our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Summerall is open to these beliefs, stating, That is good, for believing what you do, we confer upon you a martyr's death. A contrast to his earlier flippant comment to Howie, that Jesus was the son of a virgin, impregnated by a ghost. Upon realising that his Christian beliefs in some respects feed the villagers' ideas, in an attempt to save himself, Howie actually resorts to science to explain why the harvest failed. It's nothing to do with the sun gods, but because the strains failed and the crops are not meant to be grown on Summer Isle, therefore his sacrifice will have no bearing. He does forget the fact that they have grown every year since Lord Summer Isle's grandfather arrived, but argues that in a year's time they will need to perform another sacrifice and it will need to be greater, Lord Summer Isle himself. At this point, Lord Summer Isle has a moment of self-doubt. He listens to Howie and looks down, appearing to quietly question his own beliefs and pondering that Howie may well have a point. When faced with the accusation that the sacrifice will not work, he responds with, I know it will. Not I believe it will, but a statement of fact, almost as if he needs to reconvince himself of his beliefs. He is in far too deep to backtrack now and showing any doubt to the villagers could see them turn on him in an instant. His statement that the crops will not fail is equally unconvincing through its forced emphasis. It is here where we can see that the Wicker Man is relevant in today's divisive society, in which people remain steadfast in their viewpoints, be they political, religious or otherwise, even when faced with reasonable logical counterpoints. Is this Summer Isle's Pontius Pilate moment, potentially believing that Howie should not be crucified for having to bow to the will of the people, powerless to stop it despite his position of authority and awaiting what will happen next? And what will happen next? If the crops do not fail, Howie would be revered as a martyr, an individual whose sacrifice saved the island, an individual like Christ who would be revered for years to come. But what if they failed? Would it be the end of the village's pagan faith? Of course not. One of mankind's most interesting characteristics is our way to emphasise things that support our beliefs and ignore those which counteract them. Maybe they would sacrifice Lord Summerisle, but in his position of power he has the ability to twist their reasoning and logic should the harvest not bear fruit. If the crops failed, the villagers would start to question not necessarily their beliefs, but perhaps the sacrifice itself. They would potentially argue whether Howie was a virgin, or seek another reason as to explain why the crops failed that isn't as simple as science, or that there is no god of the sun or goddess of the field. 
as how he is led up to the hill towards the wicker man is very similar to Christ being led to the cross at Calvary. Here we see the first glimpse of the titular figure, and it's not only the same time that Howie sees it, but also the first time that Edward Woodward, the actor, saw the creation as well. His reaction is very real. As Howie is dragged towards the effigy, his tune changes once again. Whereas early he was claiming that it was nature that saw the crops fail, he calls to the villagers that the Lord has wasted your orchards, referring to a punishing Old Testament God. As he takes on his Christ-like role whilst the villagers sing, Summer is a-coming in, Howie retorts with, The Lord's my shepherd. It is here that he becomes more Christ-like than Christ himself. In the biblical text telling of Christ's crucifixion, he calls out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The only time he does not call God Father. Christ may have lost his faith at this moment, yet Howie, in a similar position, clings on to his, although he equally does not resort to Christ's forgive them for they know not what they do line, actually accepting his place as a martyr and praying to his God for mercy at his judgment. And then we get the remarkable final shot as the wicker man's head tumbles and we see a source of Christian and pagan worship, the blazing sun, which has been curiously absent during the overcast climax, come into view before the credits. We never see how he actually perish, and note that there is no death in the wicker man. The ending, strange as it may seem, was contentious prior to the film's release, with one idea being that rain would fall and extinguish the flames, whilst the treatment for a sequel opened with Howie being rescued from the effigy, badly burned, but alive nonetheless. Such ideas have never fortunately been put in front of a camera, and the film's iconic, perfect ending remains just that, resulting in a tale of what people can do in desperate times when all they have left to cling to is a charismatic leader who offers them a future orchestrated by blind faith. And that, in this day and age, may well be more horrifying than any crucifixion.